Hello, I'm Dr. Ruth Roberts, the original Holistic Pet Health Coach, and I am delighted to introduce you to the, our guest, Dr. Igor Yerman. Dr. Yerman is one of the foremost experts on the field of pulsed electromagnetic frequency. He is from Ljubljana in Slovenia, and he is a full professor at the in the field of theoretical biology at the University of Ljubljana, and he is also a uh, the CEO of the Bion Institute. Uh, Dr. Yerman has a very fascinating uh, field of research, and he's with us today to help us understand a bit more about pulsed electromagnetic frequency, which is one of my favorite techniques to use to support pets with their health. So Dr. Yearman, welcome. First, for those that are not familiar with PEMF, can you describe what it is? And Well, um, PEMF is an acronym for Pulsed Electromagnetic Field. It is used for uh, non-invasive therapy to healing uh, and improvement of various physiological functions. The technology involves the emission of electromagnetic waves at various frequencies and intensities directed towards specific areas of the body or the body as a whole. The underlying principle is that these mostly magnetic fields can penetrate the body without a resistance influencing cellular functions to stimulate healing and improve well-being. And how did people start to think of using this as a therapy for healing? Actually, the therapeutic potential of electromagnetic fields was first hinted even in ancient times, with records indicating that various civilizations used magnetic materials for their purported healing properties. The 19th century saw then an increased interest in the use of electrical devices for various medical conditions, termed also electromedicine. Innovators like Nikola Tesla contributed to the development of high-frequency electrical currents which as were explored for their potential medical application. In the 1950s, scientists began to study the effects of electromagnetic fields on biological systems. They found that these fields could influence cellular processes and potentially promote healing. A significant leap for PEMF therapy came in the second half of the 20th century with various researchers exploring the effects of electromagnetic fields on bone healing and repair. NASA played a crucial role in this phase, conducting studies in 1970s and later to explore the potential of PAM therapy to improve healing and tissue growth, especially as a countermeasure to the bone density loss and muscle atrophy experienced by astronauts in space. The success of these studies, particularly in bone healing, led to the first FDA approval of PAM devices in 1979 for stimulating bone growth. Since then, research has continued to explore the potential uses of PAM therapy for a variety of health conditions, including pain management, wound healing, osteoarthritis, and even depression, inflammation, injury recovery, and a range of other health issues. And, how, and that's certainly astonishing, the, the way that, that it's been implemented, but how does uh, the pulsed electromagnetic field affect the body at, the, at a cellular level? Not everything is known in this respect, however, uh, it is known that uh, the magnetic fields uh, can affect the electrical charges around and within cells, thereby improving cellular function and health. 
then through increased movement of ions and electrolytes, PEMF can also enhance cellular communication and signal transduction. And uh, by direct interaction with cellular and tissue endogenous electromagnetic fields, like brain waves, mostly through resonance, which is also called entrainment. And there are so many devices available. What types will work best for dogs and cats? Yes, exactly. There are various types of PEMF devices available, including mats, loops, pads, and handheld units. One should consider which design would be most comfortable and less stressful for his or her pet to use. For example, mats or pads might be better for pets to lie on, while loops or handheld units can be useful for targeting specific areas of the body. If one plans to use the device in different locations, the owner should look for something lightweight and portable. Furthermore, the intensity of PEMF should be appropriate for animals. Pets are generally more sensitive to electromagnetic field than humans, so a device with a lower intensity range is preferable. The frequency range of the device should be adjustable or set to levels known to be beneficial for pets. Low to moderate frequencies are typically used for healing and pain relief in animals. Experiences also demonstrate that it is preferable to have a device that is easy to operate with clear settings for intensity and duration. Thereby, one can be sure about consistency using the device as recommended without confusion. A device with an automatic shutoff feature can prevent overexposure and ensure that the therapy session ends even if the owner is not directly supervising. If available, it is preferable devices that have clinical studies or proven, proven outcomes in treating conditions similar to your pets. This can provide a more evidence-based approach to selecting a device. That totally makes sense. And when we use PIMF for dogs, you've mentioned some of the cellular mechanisms, but what are the main mechanisms of action when we're looking more at the overall effect on a specific tissue or organ? Well, here I can only say that it is the same um, as for other mammals, and of course humans included. Actually, PEMF works on a very general biophysical level, biochemical level, on ionic currents, on charges, electrical charges. Um, so actually we can say that uh, it is very general. It may include even plants or microorganisms. We did uh, very similar experiments with similar outcomes on bacteria um, many years ago. So uh, really, we can conclude that there is nothing very special with um, dogs or other pets or even mammals. And this is uh, very good. So this means that we, if we have results on even bacteria, they can be very good guidelines for um, application on pets. That's amazing. And then when we're using PEMF for supporting dogs with arthritis, how what are we looking for in terms of an effect within that arthritic limb or joint? Mm -hmm. PEMF therapy supports individuals and pets with arthritis by addressing the key issues associated with the condition. These are pain, inflammation, and joint degradation. With pain, pain therapy helps in reducing it by interrupting the pain signal transmission to the brain. PEM devices can have an anti-inflammatory effect. This is possibly due to the improvement of blood circulation and the reduction of inflammatory cytokines. Research has suggested that PEMF therapy can stimulate the growth of cartilage cells, 
so-called hunger sites, which are crush crucial for the repair and maintenance of joint cartilage. PEM therapy can improve blood circulation by affecting the charge of the blood cells, reducing aggregation and encouraging their flow. Enhanced circulation can add in the delivery of nutrients and oxygen to the affected areas promoting healing, especially in capillaries. Yes. And the other thing that many people are using PEMF to to support is anxiety or stress reduction. How does it work in that situation? I would say mostly by brainwave entrainment, which means a sort of resonance or induction between the PEMF um, waves and the brain waves. So PEMF therapy can further influence the autonomic nervous system, which control the body's stress response. By promoting a shift toward the parasympathetic state, often referred to as rest and digest state, PEMF can help induce a state of relaxation in pets, counteracting the effects of stress and anxiety. Interesting. So there's so much discussion now about brain-heart coherence. So really, PEMF is helping to move the brain waves into a much more coherent state. Um, yes, and then, yes. yes. PEMF can, can actually help in achieving coherence. Um, That's and you're yeah, synchronizing your know, left and right uh, brain lobe and so on. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. That's something we all need help with, I think. Um, now, one of the other things that I know that PEMF can do is to accelerate healing. And how does it work in these situations? How will it help to in, improve the uh, the speed of healing? Well, PEMF therapy induces changes in electrical charge of tension or potential around and within the cell, improving the cell's ability to generate energy through ATP. With more energy, cells can function more efficiently, repair themselves more effectively, and replicate more rapidly. This improved cellular function is crucial for healing as it enhances the body's ability to repair the damaged tissue, whether from injury, surgery, or disease. PEMF can cause a vasodilation, which is the widening of the blood vessels. This process increases blood flow to the affected area, bringing more oxygen, nutrients, and healing factors to the tissues while removing waste products. Improved circulation is vital for healing as it supports the regeneration of injured tissue and reduces recovery time. PEMF therapy can reduce inflammation, as already said, by affecting the membrane of the cells involved in the inflammatory process. By promoting cellular function and reducing inflammation, PEMF therapy can accelerate the repair of the soft tissue, including muscles, tendons, and ligaments. This makes it useful for a wide range of injuries. That's very interesting. And of course, one of the question if for any pet parent is going to be how long will it take to begin to see results with, with PEMF therapy? Well, the time frame for seeing results with PEMF therapy in pets can vary widely depending on several factors, including the condition of being treated, the severity of the condition, the specific PEM device used with its frequency, intensity, and duration of treatment, and the individual response of the PET. For acute conditions such as injuries or post-surgical recovery, some PETs may show signs of improvement within just a few days to a week for starting PEM therapy. The initial improvements can include reduced swelling, decreased pain, and enhanced mobility. In cases of chronic conditions like arthritis or long-term injuries, it may take longer to observe significant improvements. Owners might notice gradual benefits over several weeks to a few months. The frequency and duration of PEM therapy sessions can also impact how quickly results are observed. 
Some conditions may benefit from daily sessions, while others may require therapy several times a week. Sessions can vary in length from a few minutes to an hour, depending on the device and the condition being treated. And, and that's one of the things that I really like about the PetsPemph mat is that there are pre-programmed settings, which makes it easy to get started, but there's also an advanced setting where you can vary the intensity and customize both the treatment level and the length. Can you speak about why that might be important, why pet parents should consider that? Yeah. Just like humans, each pet can respond differently to PM therapy. Some may show rapid improvements, while others may have a more gradual response. Factors such as the overall health of the pet, age, and the presence of other medical conditions can influence the response rate. It is important to close monitor the pet's response to the therapy and adjust the treatment plan as needed. Uh, this might include changing the frequency or duration of sessions based on the pet's progress. One of the things that I think most most people using uh, PEMF is uh, would be interested in is to understand how they can integrate PEMF with other conventional as well as alternative treatment options. PEMF therapy can be used alongside conventional medications such as anti-inflammatories, analgesics, and other pain management drugs. It can enhance the effectiveness of medications by improving cellular uptake and reducing the required dosage, potentially minimizing harmful side effects. PEMF can support physical therapy and rehabilitation efforts by accelerating tissue repair, reducing inflammation, and increasing circulation. This can make physical therapy exercises more effective and less painful encouraging better participation and outcomes. In the context of post-surgical recovery, PEMF can be used to speed up the healing of incisions, reduce post-operative pain, and decrease the risk of infection, completing the surgical treatment and promoting faster recovery. PEMF therapy can complement nutritional support by optimizing cellular function making it easier for cells to utilize nutrients. Thus, we may speak of synergy that support the body's natural healing processes and contribute to overall health and recovery. It could be good to consult with the veterinarians for pets to design a comprehensive treatment plan that safely integrates pets with other treatments. Treatment plans should be customized to the individual's specific needs taking into account the type of condition, severity, and the presence of any other health issues. Regular monitoring and adjustment of the treatment plan are first crucial for ensure optimal outcomes, allowing for modifications based on the individual's or pet's response to the integrated therapies. So integrating PEMF therapy with conventional and other treatment options can provide a more rounded an effective approach to healing and recovery, leveraging the unique benefits of each modality to support overall well-being. And your career has been devoted to understanding the science behind uh, PEMF, and you've spoken a bit about how it works at the cellular, le cellular levels, but can you speak a bit more about that and the studies and the types of studies that have been done to support that understanding? Yes, um, a plethora of studies uh, have been done. Um, our team included, of course. Uh, for instance, we did uh, experiments on bacteria, as already said, on plants, on some insects, not on pets, um, and also on humans for healing purposes. But uh, it is only a very, very little drop in the ocean of all studies throughout the world from, let's say, 1950s, as already said, 
And uh, so the, the studies are mostly made on organisms, on tissues, on cells, and on biochemistry, and uh, also studies on biophysical level and so on. But uh, besides what has already been said about mechanisms, it seems that peculiarly hence low frequency and low intensity stimulation brings an edit rhythm to cellular biochemical and biophysical processes involving ionic and endogenous cellular oscillations. Thereby, this therapy brings order that is needed for cells to recover and regain their energy. So it brings order and rhythm. I think that this is very important with um, beneficial interference with uh, the cellular fields and also tissue fields and the fields of the whole organism or brain, for instance. And, and that's exactly it. So we spoke about returning the brain to coherence, but what we forget is that we physical organisms are interacting with the magnetic field of the earth. And so if we okay. fall out of coherence, then this is a way to return the body at the very cellular level back to coherence. Is that a fair statement? Um, yes, yes. This is very important. It is, because that's sort of the, the, the difficulty with modern life is the um, disharmony we find ourselves in. Yes, and this electromagnetic pollution is mostly about um, disynchronized um, electromagnetic fields of very, very high frequency. It's completely different from tenth, which is low frequency and low intensity. So what we gain from Wi-Fi sources or mobile antennas and so on is um, um, very arrhythmic, you know, it's, it's not rhythmic uh, waves that are attacking our own endogenous electromagnetic field so that um, we need more energy to counteract it. And uh, by PENS therapy, um, we can regain uh, some of this lost rhythm in our body, in our own electromagnetic endogenous oscillation. That, that's amazing because that that is a very it's a growing concern. I think people are just becoming aware of the issues behind the uh, electromagnetic yeah. pollution, essentially. Mm -hmm. But this mm -hmm. is really a way to reground uh, and reharmonize all of all living beings back to the the ways that should be dominant. So um, I've heard stories of people that will get these. Uh, smart plugs that you can turn on from your cell phone device uh, to turn a lamp on, for instance. And the poor little dog that's right at the level of the plug just starts getting crazy mm -hmm. because all of a sudden it's hit with a wave of incoherent energy. So the pet parent would switch the device off and then the dog goes back to calm. But still, it's been experiencing incoherent waves and, and really hasn't completely reset. Do you think that's a reasonable assessment of what's going on there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's really, it's difficulty. Uh, and lastly, what do you see as the future of PIMF in, in dog healthcare? Um, the recognition of PIMF therapy within veterinary clinics is a result of its demonstrated efficacy in treating a range of conditions supported by scientific research, regulatory approval, and positive clinical outcomes. Its non-invasive nature, ease of use, and safety profile further contributed to its acceptance and widespread use in veterinary medicine. As research continues, it is likely that the application of PAM therapy in veterinary clinics will expand, offering additional benefits to pets across a variety of conditions. First and foremost, we can foresee the improvement of devices and stimulation regimes for already known problems and diseases, so that the effectiveness 
of relief and treatment will be higher than it is today. At the same time, we can anticipate that the development of bioelectromagnetic science will expand the range of disorders, ailments, and diseases that can be effectively alleviated or eliminated by PAM stimulation. We can also expect an increasingly wide range of animal species, so not only dogs or cats, to benefit from effective PAM therapy. In fact, there are already many path experiments being carried out on animals even more than on humans. There always are test models. Dr. Yerman, thank you so much for spending time with us today. I really appreciate your expertise and the knowledge that you bring to this field. It's been classified as sort of a woo-woo thing for many years, but what I've seen with myself, with our dog, with our clients' pets has been nothing short of spectacular in terms of the assistance they get from PEMF devices, regardless of manufacturer. I happen to be very fond of Pets PEMF because it is so uh, economically produced and so very effective. So again, thank you so much for your help today um, and your wisdom, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah. You're welcome, and uh, thank you too for this good interview. It is my pleasure. Yeah.